Hello, it's Justin in post-production. We had a, a number of audio issues in this episode, uh, including losing a good chunk of it uh, towards the beginning. Uh, the worst of it should be over by about two minutes in, but uh, you may hear like a big jump in audio quality at some point. I apologize for this, but I didn't want to re-record the whole thing. All right, on to the episode. Um, well, I think Speaking we have a, of hideous and unusable. We have a podcast going now. Um, I believe. When did this happen? Uh, about two years ago. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, those videos <coughs> yes. have been kind of a blur for me. Yeah, well, I think they've been a blur for everyone. You know, there was this whole, like, there, there's been a bug going around, I heard, and it really screwed uh, stuff up. Um, yeah, and just it, it, just in the midst of that, we, we, kept, we went in one side of that, and we came out the other with a, with a podcast. Yes. Um, hello, and welcome to, well, there's your problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters. It has slides. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. I am Alice Goldwell Kelly. I'm the person who's talking now. My pronouns are she and her. I nailed it this time. Fuck you. Uh, yay, Liam. Uh oh. Yay, Liam. Yay, Liam. With a Liam, no, we've lost him. He's just we've dropped off the Zencaster completely. We've lost, we've lost Liam. We're we're a man a... down already. Yeah, I was about this... to say this. This new Zencaster is definitely not going well for uh, no, anyone. No kidding. Yeah, so I mean, we got uh, Liam uh, offline. Let me. M maybe his house was struck by a meteor. I don't know. Maybe that's a possibility. I mean, he did mention that. His, that... I'm gonna fucking kill myself. <laughs> okay, okay, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> you dropped off just in time for me to say, "Yo, Liam," and we can cut back to you coming in to uh, threaten suicide. Hi, hi, I'm Liam Anderson. I'm very unhappy. My pronouns are he and him. <laughs> Stop fucking telling me I'm pronouncing shit wrong. I don't fucking care. I don't like you. Shut the fuck all up. All kinds of exotic ways. Oh, Liam would make this podcast would be so much better if Liam weren't on it. Oh, I got, sorry. I got, I got I people in the comments. Hear you. I can't fucking hear I, you. I got people in the comments last time who accused me of like justifying the attempted murder of Salman Rushdie. So that's yes, fun. and apparently I'm in uh, because I said don't violate the Espionage Act. That's very rich coming from an anarchist. I'm not sure what that criticism is supposed to be. Listen, mean, listen, like, like it's like Bakunin said. Me. It's like Bakunin said, in matters of espionage, refer to the, the uh, espionage maker, right? I just want to say that I did, in fact, build the H-bomb in my basement. <laughs> and I, I, have, I have donated it to my local DSA chap. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm <laughs> so sick of Liam eating, talking about sports That's, and threatening the audience. Is he useful for anything else? Are we sure he's not the, some conservative plan like on this podcast? Three, those are like three of the funnest things you do. Yeah, hang yeah, on. This, I'm gonna this... remove this comment and all of it. <laughs> and I'm gonna Robert Williams, you specifically can blow me backwards. <laughs> I I believe this is good praxis for all leftists to build H bombs in your basement and donate them to your local DSA chapter. I I, build, I believe so. To build yeah. working class power. <laughs> <laughs> you have the break light clinic Tuesdays, uh, uh Wednesdays you have, you know, the nuclear H -bomb tests. Clinic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, um <laughs> christ well all right what we see here is a cable it, it's a cable why is it on the ground uh it that's a good question it, it's not supposed to be on the ground no what, what um, we're gonna do is we're gonna tell you a story uh about yes. the united states marine corps and their poor cable management yes uh, well <laughs> Same. Uh. <laughs> you got. You got to like. I know it's hard work, but you do have to like get them all together and label them and zip tie them together. Using the little cable combs. Yeah. 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 yeah, I yeah. Don't believe Marines are smart enough to I... manage a cable. <laughs> I, well, no, I... Roz. Roz. If, if when you're a marine, every cable is a tasty snack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bunch of like, uh, sort of like. Yeah, you guys table... thought this was gonna be me defending the Marine Corps, but I will never do that. <laughs> oh, no, they actually invented different colored cables in order to <laughs> satisfy the marine desire to like <laughs> gnaw on them. Yeah, it's weird because the box of marine cables includes a sharpener at the back. <laughs> <laughs> Just a very waxy cable. The Navy's constantly, you know, replacing cables that Marines have not. Would you idiots stop eating these? Yeah. 
It's fine, the... because if you put a little vest on a marine and you train them enough, you can actually get them to like lay cables inside difficult spaces. So, like, people don't know this, but a lot of the wiring inside a large airliner, there's actually like a there's a marine has to go in there in the crawl space. You have, you have confined space training, but they're more disposable. <laughs> Recruiting <laughs> marines with the tiniest, with the tiniest, most nimble hands. Yes. <laughs> Why do you think they started doing the like um, uh, sort of anime posters? They're trying to get fanboy marines. That's why. Oh, I don't do like I? the phrase "femboy marines." Well, I can tell it's, you that it's, right it's, now. it's happening. Yeah. That's it's, yeah. a, it's a you take it away. Of, no, take it's, her away. It's a guards. <laughs> take her away. <laughs> bad news: the guards are femboy marines. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is all I've ever wanted. <laughs> all right, but before we talk more about femboy marines, what a we sense. have to do the goddamn news. These motherfuckers. Uh, no, mercy. no mercy. On the WTYP enemies list. There was an article in the New York Times recently that I wanted to talk about. I know we don't usually do like reading series on this podcast. Oh, one second, I gotta shut my door. You can keep talking. <laughs> what, are, they, are there pro lanternfly elements on the other well, side of your we, door? We've, we've got to like equip and train sort of moderate lanternflies. I'm. I, I, the New York Times wrote an article that was like, these are the people who defend lantern flies, and I, I just you know anyone who reads this article should should be like, why would you write an article about these people? Because they're not why are real. We both sizing this insane shit. Why are, yeah. why are we both sizing lantern flies? So I'm do, do you want to do you want to explain what a lantern fly is and why they're on the enemies list of the so podcast? The, the, the spotted lantern fly is an insect from China. China. Um, China. Right, God, he which, was the funniest president. The worst, yes. but also the funniest. I uh, not the worst. Uh, no, that's true. I guess. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess yeah, the, James Buchanan the, was pretty wretched. The, the, yeah. the thing Andrew about Johnson, Trump that we can Rutherford say is that Hayes, he he, yeah. he did never own slaves that we know of. That we know um, of. Yes. That we know. Yeah. <laughs> well, plus one against Hillary Clinton, I guess. But that's a joke. <laughs> too. That's a joke. Too. Leave me alone. <laughs> Fuck, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm, so, I'm so, sorry, I didn't know why I was fucking eating. <laughs> Stick to sports. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so these these guys, they're an invasive species in the on the eastern seaboard, right? Mm -hmm. Came to Pennsylvania in 2019, I want to say, like early 2019. There was yeah, a stand in. Uh, the 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 government gave us a standing or Shoot order to, to kill order yeah, basically murder, yeah. <laughs> murder these insects on site. Yeah, it's like um, Florida and iguanas, which we've yes. talked about what? before. I'm pretty. We've talked about this before, either like on the show or in the preamble to oh, that yes, Florida yes, yes, just yes, lets yes. you like kill an iguana with a machete because uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so so much the same. You're just supposed to like kill these guys, right? Like stink yeah, bugs as well. Instantly, yeah. You're supposed to, you know, when you see them, you're supposed to kill them. I I will say, I think a lot of people have kind of stopped doing it, at least here in eastern Pennsylvania, because they got so much of a foothold now. It doesn't matter. But like those, oh, I first, kill them every chance I get, dude. They are I, they're, they're, like they're, they're also hideous. Let's be a hundred percent honest here. It is helpful when the animal that the government is telling you that for ecological reasons you need to kill many of looks like this. I think they're kind of pretty. What? Um, <laughs> God damn it, dude! But the first couple, the first like year or so, you know, everyone was squishing them. Like the, right? like now, fucking, it's like the Pokemon evolution yeah. of a ladybug. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> Um, but I, 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 now we're we're at the point where we're here. We're three years later, and the New York Times decides to write an article like, "Here are the people who are sympathetic to the lanternflies." And it's like, oh, I'll squish them. It's too. a bug. <laughs> Defeatists, it's a bug. fifth columnists, yeah. <laughs> trying to uh, weaken I'm, America against yeah, the. This yeah, is true. Absolutely. This is true. I, the, I one, mean, the one woman went to Temple, and I'm just like, listen. I thought Bill Cosby was the most embar embarrassing thing to come out of Temple, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't one of these fuckers like uh nearly cost us a whole episode of the show at one point? One of these guys flew into my air conditioner. Uh, oh, the air conditioner, yeah. Um, and it died and it blocked the drain. And I didn't realize for a while. And my air conditioner filled up with enough water that it started blowing black mold into my apartment. 
for like four months and I developed a horrible cough and I thought I had COVID. Turned out it was the air conditioner with a dead lantern fly in it. Oh, so the, my these God. guys are bastards. They're I, terrible. <laughs> you know what's weird? You're like generally a risk averse dude, I would say. Yeah. And sometimes you tell me things and do shit that I'm just like, and how is he still alive? How? How? God's just like, oh, that's Ross. Don't worry about him. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> He's going to be fine. If, if, if something bad happened to me, I wouldn't be around to tell you. No, I would be around to have to do it. it it's, it's, quite, it's quite literally survivor bias, right? Yes. Like, it, you're, you're, you're fine because you're able to tell us about it. So I, God I, damn, I, though, these things. I have, uh, I, have, I have no sympathy for them. No, you should not have any them. sympathy for massacre them. Massacre them. No, they, try, they tried to kill my friend. Uh, kill him. Uh, not good, the friend. We, we cannot emphasize enough. Do not kill Roz, please. No, pl please yes. do not. If you do, you will become an enemy of the podcast. Uh, and if you're an enemy of the podcast, that means that we use our platform to call for your your murder. Yes, um, we can do that. We'll yeah, issue like a Salman fatwa Rushdie. against you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God damn! I I I don't know how people got that out of what I said or what I think I said, but I uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, people are I, I just experienced a brief like fugue state where I was like, "Yeah, you should be killed like a spotted lantern fly for, <laughs> for blasphemy." Alice, you're good at making people go completely psycho. It's I, really funny. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Not not always to me, but I I recognize that to an outside observer, the effect that I have on people is is very funny. <laughs> it is very funny. Uh, I I Alice, I use you as a barometer. To know if a person is sane or not. I'm, a sort, yeah. of, like, I'm, a sort, I'm sort of the podcast's ablative heat shield. Yeah, that's ways. a good way of putting it. <laughs> no, I entered it correctly, you dumb horse. Sorry. Right. Yeah, kill these things. Next kill, slide. Kill, kill yeah, the lantern no flies, mercy. yes. No mercy. Uh, so, uh, a couple of days ago, in fact just the one day ago, uh, one of the car shuttle trains that goes through the Channel Tunnel had mysterious alarms, and because of those mysterious alarms they had to shut down the train. Right. Uh, and then, because they had to shut down the train, they just piled everybody off the train into- off. Walk. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. So, in, in, into the service tunnel. Much, much like the joke about how uh, ESOPs, uh, the kind of the extended operations thing for, for planes, secretly means engines turn or passengers swim. Similar sort of safety <laughs> application here. You have to get in the tunnel. Um, and then everybody had to get in this the, the service tunnel between the two uh, tunnels that comprise the channel tunnel, wait there until they could send a cargo train through the other one to come pick them up, and they had to like sit on the floor in the car decks. Um, and go back to go back to England, which means you mean like 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 an actual like freight train came through, and they're like, "All right, get on a flat car." Yeah, I, I think go, it's go I, sit I, next to this. Hop, uh, hop go up, sit next to, Yeah, get, get in this container. <laughs> it, it, it was enclosed, but it was like an empty car that used for like transporting vehicles. Oh, no, 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 uh, no, no. So, no, so, no, so, no. so the a Jewish man, no, no, no. I was going to no, say no, the, no, the, no, the, no. the FEMA shackle car thing, it, it <laughs> became real. It became real for a second. But so everybody had to like uh, stay in this, this tunnel for like five hours, then they got sent back to England. Uh, the train eventually got out going the way it was going, which means this was a very long con to separate people from their cars. All of the like, your yeah, your car is in France and you aren't. We just have to do this like several hundred thousand times more, and I think we can solve climate. How? Why don't they just have a, a passenger car and a little locomotive that could like <laughs> show up and pick up all the mm -hmm. guys? I, this is like not a difficult thing. I don't know why you have to send a goddamn freight train in there. I don't know. But uh, the I, only I, thing I, we had was a freight train. All right. I, <laughs> I, I should have used it as the, the the image for this, but yeah, there's just a picture of people like sitting on the floor in one of these one of these cars. So, I mean, lights. Christ. Hey, nobody died. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, the worst you got was like, as I've said in the Chiron there, you got a free tour. And like, okay, yeah. it lasted five hours and you were under the sea and maybe you had a panic attack. It, it would I, be pretty cool to go on a service tunnel. Yeah, yeah, that would be interesting at least. It, it, yeah. would, be cool it would be interesting to, it, once. One yeah. time. It would be cool to go in the channel tunnel. I've never done that. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, it's cool. Uh, the, uh, I think the only real thing that went wrong here, aside from uh, waiting five hours to go ride on the floor of a, a, a cargo car, is uh, they didn't use the fucking little fire trucks that we've seen oh, in tunnels before. We oh, didn't use oh, them. Be funny. Sucks. Terrible. But that's it. That's yeah. The, the thing works. It's fine. No, stop this complaining. This tunnel is like what twenty three miles long. I think, I think so. so. Uh, and why it, like did failed. Them, why did Take them five hours to send a train in there. Uh, because it involved, uh, respectively, the two most organized miles, countries the in the world, miles. England and France. Um, I think it happened like a third of the way in from the English side, so... Uh, we don't really know anything yet, too. It's kind of too soon to tell. You could have got in with like a little speeder or something, just picked up four people at a time and got it done faster. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but at least they didn't tell them, you know, uh, England is this way, walk out. Uh, it's, you know, uh, go, go walk like five, six miles or whatever. Like five hours, I would have started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, made you, it you can't keep me in here. Yeah, I'm, just gonna do, I'm just going to do Bro, like a 5k uh, down the inside of the channel <laughs> tunnel. It's going to no, be thanks. cool as shit. I'm going to get like uh, a little sort of achievement get, for get, this. Get a finisher ribbon. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh, it's uphill the whole way. Uh, I should have uh, gone to France. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about tunnels, they're kind of uphill both ways. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate. Yeah. We have a third news we item do? today. Yeah, right. I, I put another one in. We got here. Oh, yeah, oh this I thing. I, I, I love this thing. Yeah. I have been looping video of this fucking thing. Just the noise it makes. They've, they, they've reopened the uh, giant slide on Belle Isle in uh, Detroit. And, um, <laughs> well, they, they, uh, they did something to mess with it because people go too fast now and they've all been bouncing off the metal and they've been it, splayed out. Congratulations, breaking bones you have CTE, all. yeah. Yes. yeah it, it, it looks like a machine you built. Like, you remember the, the euthanasia roller coaster? This is, yes. this is like that, but for, like, giving you, uh, like, right, fracturing this, your coccyx. Yeah, this is this is sort of uh, what what's what's uh, euthanasia, but for um, battery. Um, <laughs> we're talking like some kind of medically assisted battery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's just, what just this like thing is doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, you see people just fly down this thing, uh, and just yeah, no, it's it's something you would do to crash test dummies. Yeah, the weird it's thing is. And it's metal, and it's in the middle of summer, and like it's got to be fucking hot. There's a thing at the bottom that looks like it's just going to shave off the entire top layer of skin off you, and people are coming down here just like it's, it sounds like throwing a brick in a washing machine. It's incredible. Um, to the best of my knowledge, this is in an identical configuration to what it was before COVID, which is the last time it was open. They just forgot how to operate it properly, which is it's supposed to be waxed. Uh, and if you know, wax it, it increases friction. It didn't you didn't oh, okay. lube up the fucking well not lube, I guess you didn't the opposite of lube. Yeah, what's the opposite of lube? Wax sandpaper. Mm, yeah, we did you didn't <laughs> wax up the slide enough and yeah. now it's 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 yeah. too lubed. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> yeah. Um I mean to be fair though, how the fuck like imagining do, do you just like go down it in a thing covered in wax and hope that waxes it? Like what? Uh, no, you, uh, well, okay, when you go down it, they put you in a burlap sack sort of thing. Ah, uh, I see, that's what this that is. That way you don't yeah. get friction burdens on there. Um, I assume that, I don't know how they wax it though. I, I have no idea. Um, if Love you are to an find operator, out. if you're yeah. an operator of the Belle Isle giant slide, um, Please contact us. Yeah, if, if you know how you wax this, please tell, please tell me, because I'm very interested. Uh, a Detroit rapper made a great song about it. Uh, ah. I forget what his name is. Um, but I, I included the lyrics here in, in the, the, the Chiron. <laughs> it's like jumping off the roof on a giant slide. You might like even jumping lose off a like tooth a very on like a giant slide, <laughs> very like <laughs> crenellated roof, it's like falling off a cathedral. You can like suffer an injury in a way that previously only like a medieval master mason would have. Yeah, it's very confusing. I think generally, like the the contours of the slide, down, up, down, up, down, up. 
I mean, they're supposed to be restricting speed, but if you don't wax it, you know, it just becomes incredibly unsafe. It would make yeah, more just, sense to just do it as one big drop there. And then yeah, it's just have, like a series of like jumps that just fuck with your spine. Yeah, it's yeah. I don't. I I I don't like the. Like, yeah. I think there's extreme chiropractic, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Fun, fundamental design issues with the slide, which are being mitigated through wax. Um, yeah, you should have a slide that works without wax. I think it's the. That's it what is, I would do. It, it, that's it, a, that's, it, a, that's to, a to me, it, oil lesson here. It, it stinks of it stinks of goon design. It reminds me of nothing so much as the zip line that kills your child. Yes, um. uh, <laughs> something awful zip line, or or um, I don't know what else. Yeah, basically just that. For for only five hundred dollars, we will throw your child down a mountain, mm. killing. <laughs> 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 Much like the Spartans, we are leaving your children to die on both sides. It's like one of those one of those baby drop boxes at the fire station. <laughs> Instead, he dumps them off a cliff. Yeah, the, the baby drop boxes now come with a slide for like enhanced entertainment. This is what we're doing. Instead of uh, we banned abortion, but we you can now throw your baby off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the music from the Lion King is playing. <laughs> I mean, this thing is basically an abortion provider in itself if you go down this way, you're yeah, pregnant. Yeah, so, you're oh pregnant, my yeah, god. it's over. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is like now the only legal sort of like abortion service in like 30 states. This is true, this is true. You gotta find your local giant slide. <laughs> Abortion funds in the description, folks. Yes, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, um, giant slide funds. <laughs> <laughs> list several manufacturers in the description. <laughs> <laughs> Convince your local authority to install one today. <laughs> doing great. Yes, doing great. 20 minutes in, and maybe we'll start the actual podcast. Probably well, not, though. Yeah, uh, maybe. Um, well, that was the goddamn news. The goddamn news. <laughs> oh, sleepy. Uh, okay. Oh, boy. A form so of I transport th- perfected by somethingawful.com. Yes. So what we, what we first have to do here is ask, what, what's a cable car, right? You, you put some buckets on a string, you I run them down the string really waited, fast. I guess, yeah. Yes. I, I, um, I use some of these in uh, workers and resources because I can't think of a smarter way to get guys up to a mine. It's just really irritating to get the guys up to the mine unless, you know, they really need to improve like the tunnel thing uh, in mm-hmm. order to make that. I mean, I, I've just been playing a whole lot of it because I got good at it recently and that was a terrible decision. <laughs> oh, <foolish. laughs> you need to do like a sort of a Soviet Franklin series. Yeah, I, I, I think it. I think it'd be less effective for like storytelling. I think is the thing. There's too much game mechanics. Franklin, yeah, yes, uh, Franklin Grad. Um, Franklin Grad. Uh, yeah. So anyway, the um. Okay, here's here's a, a disclaimer before I start going right, which is, I'm unfamiliar with a lot of aspects of cable car operation. Right. If you, if you're a cable car fan. Please Don't feel make. free to roast <laughs> me in the this, comments. There, there's, there's a guy right now listening to this wearing a big hat that says, like, number one cable, one cable car, car fan. fan. That, that, like, that, the hat looks like the, the thing that suspends the cable car from the cables. Yeah, and that, <laughs> yeah. That, that's like his moment. Cracking all <laughs> ten knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, cable cars sort of evolved from ropeways, right? And the first ropeway was that we know of was built in the 1600s by a Croatian guy, but he built it in Gdansk, right? Hmm. And that was for moving spoil from a wall construction site, right? It was powered by horses. It used actual ropes, right? Uh, it wasn't really replicated. Uh, now, ropeways come back in the 1800s uh, with the advent of steam power and easily made steel cables. Yeah, I mean, this was how you you did a subway, right? It's, it's just the same principle, but you put it on an angle, right? It's uh... uh, 
you didn't have too many cable hold uh passenger railways at this point. Um, uh, okay. That was uh, cable hauled. I mean, cable hauled subways. As far as I know, Glasgow had the only one. You see, this is why I think of this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's, there's advantages to ropeways, right? So like, let's say you mined, you had a mine. It was at high elevation. You want to transport. So you're playing Soviet. Uh, yeah, workers so you, yes. yeah. Yeah. Workers and resources, Soviet Republic. Soviet. Yeah, you, 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 you. Your two options yeah. are you could build like a trestle bridge that goes at like a 60 degree angle oh, and give someone that the, the, this, the idea of like putting it, driving a bunch of trucks up and down it, or you can build yeah. one of these. So if you had a mine that was at a higher elevation, right, than where you want to transport the ore to, you could build a ropeway. And you could put the ore in buckets, and then the ore in the buckets would provide enough weight to bring the empty buckets back up, right? I, I, I see one potential safety hazard here. You see our ropeway on the left, full, the, uh, with the buckets full of ore? Yes. And you know how those buckets are meant to like uh, deposit that ore by just like swinging 180 degrees vertically, uh, and yes. just dumping it all out? And you see how the ropeway goes over a, a road? Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> fine. It's fine. Shut up. So, uh, <coughs> ropeways were very good at transporting, like, uh, material and spoil from mines at high, eleva uh, high elevations down to the ground, right? True. Um, but it took a while for passenger transportation to be considered, because then, of course, you need a steam engine, right? Yeah, there were a shitload of horses. Two yes, of horses. Uh, so some of them were partially used for transporting people for a while. The first passenger-only one was installed in Hong Kong in 1893. Um, that was also for a mine, but the ropeway was only for passengers that went to the mine. Ah, what? they did, they, they, they did oh, the okay. workers and resources okay. thing. Okay. Yes, exactly. They set it to only pick up workers. <laughs> Workers and resources, 1893 Hong Kong. Fuck, that would be cool. Anyway, yes. yeah. So uh, there were some changing habits as a result of better transportation, and certain classes had more free time. Right? Um, by yeah, the, the early birth of 19th, the leisure class, all of this the, shit. The, yeah, the leisure yeah. class. You know, the the your 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 early 1900s uh, Instagram influencers, right? <laughs> You know, they can sometimes take a vacation, maybe they can even go skiing, which we'll talk about a, li a little bit more later. Oh yeah, your Victorians um, love to die up an alp. Yes. Yeah. Could yeah. not get enough of it. Now your ropeway, generally it's a single wire in many small cabins, maybe an extra wire for electricity, or maybe not. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but they evolve into aerial tramways, right? You have fewer and larger cabins, you have more ropes, which are for per support, propulsion, safety, so on and so forth. One of the first safe. Yeah, the, the, these, these, as I understand it, are largely invented for action movie guys to fight on the top of. Yes. Yeah. I would not want to do that. No. Um, one, of the, one of the first like modern ones is called the Vetterhorn Elevator. That's in 1908. It's in Switzerland, I want to say. Was the, of course, it, it would be. Yeah, it operated from 1908 to 1915. It was closed because of World War One. These things generally got bigger and bigger. You can you can see here. This is the Shin Hotaka Ropeway. <laughs> sure, it, okay. it's in Japan, right? And it's, it's a double yeah, Japan, jacket. Pennsylvania, maybe J Japan, Pennsylvania. Yes. Oh. Yeah, this is in Galitzin. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's it goes, from, actually. goes goes from Galitzin to uh, uh, Altoona, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you you have on the top right here you have the uh, uh, Emirates airline because like any yes. kind of tourist uh, yes, gadget yes, thing yes. It has to be heavily sponsored. The least efficient way of getting across the Thames you can Genuinely get from really terrible. Yeah, you can get from basically nowhere to also basically nowhere because Docklands regeneration has been very successful to to some extent. However, in in the sort of way of like here is office zone, here is you go for a concert here zone, and then that's it. Um, and it you know it doesn't really have a lot of like 
Yeah, it's it, it's a stupid transport link. There's no reason for it to exist other than like big projects. It it's also very, these things are very very low capacity, um, which we'll talk about in the next slide. These feel uh, these feel like gadget bonds. Am I wrong? Yes. In saying that? Yeah, you would otherwise have built a gadget yeah. bond, but instead you, you, you built you a gadget would, cable. Yeah, you would sure. otherwise build. Uh, look at the all do- these hats. The, the Oh, that's light railway. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, these are some hats. <laughs> this, is, this is an early one. I don't recall which one it is. Um, I, I like how it looks like from from our perspective. There's some sort of naval gun ready to take them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they actually used like cable cars full of tourists as naval gunnery training. Yes. Uh, well, we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah, basically. Fuck. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Jesus, Roz. Well, prior to the cable car. The way you got up the mountain, if you wanted to bring a whole bunch of people up the mountain, you uh, you used a rack a, a rack railway, right? Is this um, the same thing as a funicular? Show no. me your rack. Aww. So a funicular has uh, two cars which are counterbalanced on a cable that go up and down a, a incline. A, here in America, we call it an inclined plane. Because we don't we don't know how to say words with that many syllables, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> right? Um, a a rack railway, which is another option. I, I guess actually the funicular uh, or the inclined plane did predate the rack railway, mm. um, and they were much more common because in the early days of railways, you built them like they were canals, right? Right. Which is flat, 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 flat inclined plane, flat, 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 flat inclined plane. Right, rather than trying to build a locomotive that can go up hills. Yeah, th- this uh, is the sure. area where we change elevation. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then you haul up all the passenger cars on the inclined plane. Sometimes it's steep enough that the passengers have to walk up. <laughs> yeah, thanks for nothing, Roz. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, but in the 1860s, we come up with this idea of the Rack Railway, right? Um, this is the Mount Washington Rack Railway. Still in operation. This was the, I don't think the first one, but like the first commercially successful one built in like 1868. It goes up to the top of Mount Washington. Um, it had, uh, and there's, there's a bunch of, there's, there's, it's a regular railroad, but it has a cog wheel in the middle that engages with. Yeah, it's still, it's still there. Uh, yeah, wreck. cry havoc and let slip the cogs of war. Yeah, uh, yes. very funny. Thank you. Oh, so, so it can't slip down because it's like geared into the thing. It's gearing, yes. right. Cool. Yeah, because of the gears. It can't slip down. It's a lot more traction. Um, still widely used. Um, yep. Another advantage is, you know, you can have a railway which is partially a rack railway and partially not. So you can use conventional adhesion for a lot of it, and that's much more efficient in the flat sections than when you got to go up the hill. I uh, Turn the rack on. All right. Um, smart. I like mm-hmm. this. I've never been on one of these. I've been on a couple of funiculars, but never on one Come of to these. Mount Washington. Yeah. Right. Where yeah, the fastest to. winds were ever recorded on Earth. Live show on the top of Mount Washington. We were getting blown off the top of it. 233 miles an hour, I want to say. Ooh. That'd be kind of fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We will so, get wingsuits. Two, oh, I, uh, 231. It's no longer, it no longer holds the record. Oh, bullshit. Uh, but it did for 62 years, 231 miles an hour. I've been on a rack railway. It was part of a narrow gauge system in Switzerland. It was very nice. Um, hmm. Got you up the mountain, and then you were at the top of the mountain, and then you didn't have to walk up the mountain. Yeah, we no did complaints. Walk, we did walk up the mountain one time. Yeah, no. Which was, uh, if there's know, a mountain, Ross is going to walk up yeah, it. He's going only... to bitch, bitch the entire time, but you have to like kind of walk behind him to make sure he doesn't run up the mountain and throw up, I, as, as, as he's prone to doing. I like walking up mountains. Wow. I know you do, but I follow. I have followed you a lot of places. Yeah. I, I've I've walked up one hill that wasn't even a mountain, and I didn't like it, so never again. You th- uh, my- think I'd be more fit than I am? <laughs> the uh, the the like because uh, I I went to a psychotic school, as you may know, and one of the things that they had us do was go on a, a field trip where. At some points, we we literally walked up uh, Penny Fan, which is uh, a Welsh, not quite a mountain, most notably uh, used by British Special Forces for training. So that gives you a sort of insight into the sort of pedagogical psychology there. Um, and I didn't like it. I didn't like it very much at all. 
Alice Caldwell Cadetti, if you will. Oh, very much. Yes. Uh, I like a nice. I, I like I'm a nice on fire. Yeah, I like a alien. nice uh, uh, mountain that has a whole lot of amenities on it, so I don't have to like. Uh, Sort yeah. of what do work. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, no, 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 I, I just, I just want to do the the walking. I don't want to have to like make a tent or take a shit in the woods. I just. <laughs> <laughs> I give give. I, I just want to walk. I just want to walk. I just want to do the walking. I want to get to the top. I want to have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> you'd like the um uh, i want to have like a beer the, and have a clean bathroom <laughs> the, the, the pitz gloria the one in switzerland that has the uh, revolving restaurant on top oh um, uh, yeah yeah now the swiss have it figured out because when you get to the top of the mountain there's always a mountain hut there that has like a restaurant and like a uh yeah, you can bathroom. buy one of those like yeah. sort of circular sausages that curls in on itself that kind of thing exactly and then you can <laughs> then you can like get a, a pair of sticks and you can walk down with them and you look like you're a serious hiker <laughs> <laughs> hikers he, hate him with this one weird <laughs> trick it's just Roz <laughs> running by with his sticks <laughs> <laughs> um so your problem with your rack railway you know it's pretty good but it requires right of way locomotives maintenance depots crews bridges tunnels all oh, these in, expensive in fact things. i i have a useful drop from the most recent film we did from kill james bond for this which is simply to say that building a railway is a hard miserable job yes. it's true it's yeah. true <laughs> your aerial tramway offers some obvious advantages which is that it's largely terrain agnostic um if you build the towers you string the cables between the towers, you're good. Yeah, you got to fuck with the placement a little bit so that they turn green. The cables yes. turn green, and yes, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, then then you got to build a road up to them. It's irritating. Yeah, yeah, but that's um, really annoying because the cables are really thin, so you can't always tell when they're red and when they're green. Um, and they sag a lot too, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, well. so the aerial tramway construction was greatly accelerated by the development of the helicopter, right? which made construction of towers in remote and inaccessible places easier than ever, right? Just so, drop the bitch in, yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, that, yeah that, exactly. that kind of, like, helicopter-supported construction is always insane to me. You see a lot of it with, like, electrical infrastructure, too. Oh, yes. Power, power yes, lines, yes. Yeah. 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 You got, like, the, 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 the power lines that are supported by the guy wires, and they meet at the single point, yeah. Um, as discussed in a previous Safety Third. Hmm. Uh, so... Uh, your result is, of course, you know, we build, a, uh, especially in the 20th century, you build a lot of these aerial tramways, right? More and more stupid places can be accessed by more and more uh, dumb people, right? Um, that, that's genuinely, I think, I, that, that's my sort of Rosniak's rule of modern geography to me there is we made dumber places more accessible to dumber people. Yes. Um, um, and, and, now, well, and now your fucking mm -hmm. dentist can go up Everest. Uh, get right. like hauled up there by like three Sherpas. I would like to do an Everest episode. <laughs> yes, 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 please, yes. So, all right, but I, I will say, if you put a cable car to the top of Everest, it would uh, avoid a good chunk of the problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. We have to build. We have to build. I guess the highest man-made thing ever <laughs> with, for the station at the top, and then we're but, good. You may have to uh, defile a sacred mountain, but you know it will save lives. When has that you, ever stopped any engineer yeah, doing that's that? A good point. In any that's country, a good point. That's a good point. in history. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so your 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 structure here. This is this is the um, what was the name of the the thing? Um, oh, that's mm, that's very steep. Th this that, is the, that top this left. This is the one. the Vetterhorn yeah. elevator. This was the first one. Uh, that's well, that that's very, of one, right? yeah. Yeah, I would I, be I a little was, nervous. I think it's on this one. one of the steepest ever built. I don't like that at all, dude. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'll just, I'll just jump. I'll just get a wingsuit and jump. <laughs> that's, hey, guess, that's guess, easier. guess how many accidents they had. It, it, oh, it's, it's Switzerland, so none. none. Uh, yeah, the Swiss are <laughs> yeah, very yeah, effective. Maybe it's just, just work, actually. I don't know why you build things to not work. I would, it seems like more, more difficult to do this. I don't know why you don't do give this. us the gold you stole back. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the structure of these things, um, once you get to your, like, your big sort of aerial tramway systems, you have multiple wires, right? And you have support wires and you have carrier wires, right? So your support wire is the one that holds up the car, 
right? And your carrier wire is the one that pulls it along. Um, and these are these are all isolated systems, so they're not very standardized. Sort of the gadget barn problem again. Yeah, mm-hmm. and even I found, and I'm not a cable car head. I don't know what the. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a CC guy. Yeah, I'm not a CC guy. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Some someone may may correct me. I found that that the terminology also really didn't seem to be standardized either. Like, what's a tramway, a ropeway, a gondola, a cable car, aerial mm. tramway, so on and so forth. Um, you do have problems with the technology that are sort of inherent to it, right? Number one mm. is very low capacity. Um. Yeah, not right. everywhere can be Japan, where you just have the big double-decker cars. Even that one's not very high capacity. Hmm. Um, so anyone, anyone who wants to install like an urban cable car as part of public transit is scamming you, right? Yes. Uh, oh, the uh, mayor of London again. Yes. So, uh, Sadiq the, Khan, you son of a bitch. I think this was a it? Boris project. It was a Boris well, project. Of course project. it fucking was. Well, the bikes are nice. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So this is this is in uh, Medellin, Colombia. Yeah, Medellin, jeez, Medellin, 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 Colombia. Excuse me, I, I, I don't, I don't live in Colombia. Um, <laughs> so they, they proposed they have, this bitch in 1997. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was. It's in Medellin, Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, Me- Medellin, Pennsylvania it goes to. Um, it, it it goes to Rock Hill Furnace. I don't even want to say this is a Bojo <laughs> thing as much as just your entire city is disease thing. Yeah, yeah, I know. <sighs> they have they installed six cable car lines to complement their metro. Uh, they run them. You can you can you can take them with a metro fare. Um, you know, and because you have all the favelas and stuff like that, it's very steep. It's hard to get conventional public transit up there, um, which makes sense, but. The thing is, it's inherently low capacity technology. At rush hour, these things have a forty five minute wait to get Ooh, on. That makes uh, sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, it, these they they are not serious public transportation. They're good for low density routes. Uh, they're good for tourists. Uh, the Swiss seem to make them work. Uh, yeah, in just some build locations. The well, this is true, yes, but you know they also build trains where they need the trains to go, and like the cable car goes up to the mountain hut, which is technically incorporated and therefore needs some form of tra- public transportation to go there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have isolated towers there, the maintenance can be difficult. Um, you can see, like here's 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 a kind of tower here. There's lots of different types of towers. You know, yeah, you can get cable. quite architectural with these, I've seen. Yeah, sure. The, the cable car rides on the cable, it goes over the rollers, and then onwards, you can, it's kind of funny because the rollers move. Um, it, mm. I, obviously, because, you know, you need space, the, the hanger that the cable car hangs on is off-center, you know, all this sort of stuff. Personally, I would simply build over the top of that tower a kind of like oh, T thirty four sort of <laughs> monument looking thing, since it's got the wheels already there. Yeah, a big motor at the end that moves either the, the the single cable if it's a single cable system, or the carrier cable if it's the type of system where you have a carrier cable as and you have separate cables to support the thing, right? Uh, and, your most. And, and, when you get on one of these, your abiding fear, or mine was anyway, uh, I will plunge hundreds of feet to my oh, death yeah. at any time. Yep. yep. Either and- the cable will snap, or the like thing attaching the gondola to the cable will snap, and I will plunge hundreds of feet to my death. And this is not a common failure mode for these uh, types of systems, right? Oh, thank God. Um, that's that's generally something that does not happen. We will talk about that a bit more later. Um, your most common failure is like, you know, cars get stuck or, and they get stuck in an inaccessible location. That happens uh, in Disney World uh, because uh, Corinne is a Disney person. I know all about the Disney Skyliners now, and they get stuck all the goddamn time. Oof. How do you- well, I don't know if this is, a, I don't know if it's the exact same situation. Obviously, like Roz, I'm not, I'm not a CC guy. <laughs> Sorry, but I know that they get stuck basically constantly. Yeah, I am a CC guy. 
Oh, I live in <laughs> I live Why in Bern. <laughs> <laughs> sort of attempted Swiss. But okay, so if you get stuck on this, oh, you, you're just up there. You're terrified that the thing's going to drop <laughs> off. And shit, and yes, the whole thing is else. filling up with piss and shit around your ankles. <laughs> I, uh, I I have some pictures of cable car rescues. I thought later. that was going to be a piss and shit. So yeah, well, some pictures surprised. of piss and shit. No, no. Most of the pictures of this accident we have later are full of blood. Ah, uh, cool. uh, content Great. warning. <laughs> Look away. Um. Yeah. Anyway, let's just, just talk- imagine it's uh, just imagine it's like ragu. You know, since yeah. we're in Italy, since it's Italian month. Let's uh let's talk about our boy, Cavalese. Oh, Ca- Cavalese. <laughs> Cavalese, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's a it's a commune in the autonomous province of Trento, right? Italy has two autonomous provinces; they're adjacent to each other. The other one is South Tyrol. Right? Yeah, this is this is sort of a, a product of Italy being like we understand that you are basically Austrians. Yes, um, exactly. You know, this is this, they have, your Italians now. They have they <laughs> yeah. have, they have self government. You know, they can do stuff that other provinces can't. Uh, they, they have special self-governing powers. Uh, they're Austrian, which means, obviously, they're more competent than Italian, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, it's, it's now right? Austrian month. Yeah. <laughs> Except where wine is concerned. Yeah, um, I've heard of that. Um, now, skiing has a long history. It becomes popular for vacationers, really, in the 20th century, right? Uh, sure. People need places to ski. That requires snow and hills. Uh, what has snow and hills? A mountain. But you got to get to the top of it, right? And it's hard to get up there on a foot, on foot, or in a car. So, of course, the easiest way is to use an aerial tramway. Yeah, right? use the most bare bones form of one. Like a ski lift is literally it's just a pole you grab onto, right? Yeah, or yeah. Or, or or it's a chair. Yeah. Um, it's also kind of skiing is kind of one of those class signifier sports, you know? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, you go, you go buy some land and you defile a sacred mountain with a ski resort and you rake in the cash from upper management's families. Good deal. <laughs> yeah. Right? I, I've, I've only been skiing once. Uh, as far as I know, I did not defile a sacred mountain. Um, I've never uh, done it. It's, I, it. I also went once and, uh, true to my, uh, Southern roots, I figured out how to turn left, but not right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I figured out how to stop, and I, I thought, okay, this is the most important thing I'm ever going to need to learn about skiing. Stopped and was like, okay, that was good. Co- covered uh, that. I, now I, if yeah, I'm ever yeah, flung yeah, from yeah, the I, top of a mountain with yeah. some skis on, I can, I can like stop myself. I'm good. I never need to uh, go back. I could barely do that. I mean, you know, it, it was, again, it was the turning right that was an issue. I don't know why. <laughs> um, it was somewhere in Maryland. Uh, <laughs> why? It's like it's way a, I don't associate Maryland with skiing. I Should. don't either. <laughs> What's in Maryland? Maybe. <laughs> no, this is Eastern. This was up uh, up like what two seventy two eighty is two eighty the one people that comes out people of don't know this, but because of like so the post war settlement reasons, uh, Eastern Maryland is technically governed as part of Italy, but it has sort of broad self governing yes. powers. Yeah, but it's really just big Delaware. The Eastern Shore gets real fucking 270, weird. Two seventy is the highway I was thinking about. It's, yeah. It was somewhere, somewhere way up there. As kind of like I didn't know there were. I was way up there. up there, dude. It's Maryland. Okay, well, have you, you ever you ever been through Maryland? Yeah, with you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I know it takes so long. It's such a small so state, you but like you're in there in for Frederick? so long. Is there a it, ski resort in Frederick? I think it might be north of Frederick. I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm, I'm, ends at Frederick. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> no, because it it turns into a local road after that. So, like between Frederick and Gettysburg is basically where you were. Probably, it, yeah. Be, being being me on this podcast sometimes takes on the character of being like a kid in the back seat while your parents <laughs> argue and drive <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> we do argue and drive a lot. Yes, this is true. This is true. Um. Huh. I have no idea where this place is, but I was there. <laughs> I, I, you, didn't, I you didn't imagine it. It wasn't like implanted in your head as a secret, as a false Abs- memory ab- by the absolute. CIA. Absolutely. Liberty Mountain Resort. This looks about right. That might yeah. have been it. 
Yeah. I, I the only time I went skiing was in a, a, a bit of France that border Switzerland. It's called Flen, uh, F L A I N E S, uh, which always in my head okay. I turned into okay. Flem. Here's the, thing. Here's the thing. Here's the fucking thing. All right. Yeah. Fucking Fairfield, Pennsylvania is not in Maryland. Okay. <laughs> okay, but but. But it's like it's it's based. It's yeah, in I, that I sort of where you were. I this, went to a wedding there. Yeah, I know. Oh my god, people need to stop having weddings in the middle of nowhere. I fucking know. Everyone has a drunk drive home. It sucks. Yeah, uh, having, yeah. having having a ski wedding, you got to like yeah. go down a, like double black diamond. Yeah, it's your Michelle. Yeah. All right. Anyway, um, skiing. Now that uh, we've established yeah. that. <laughs> now that we've established where you went skiing one time. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and couldn't turn right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so this particular ski area was on a mountain called Cer- Cermis? Cermis? Cermis, yeah. Uh, uh, probably. Probably. It was built sometime in the 1960s. Uh, it was very hard to find information on the actual system. Like the cable car system, like the history of it. It, 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 there was there's a lot of details about this one that were just more difficult to find than you might think. Mm. Um, but the cable car was installed at that same time, right? And this this system had a history to it, and not a great one. Um, so the first accident occurred in 1976, right? Oh God. Now the cable car was being. I feel operated. like it's never good when we just hear the first act. Well, the, first this act. is going to be this is going to be one, uh, like a sort of mini episode within the episode. We'll compress a whole episode yes. of "Where Is Your Problem" down into a couple of sentences for you. Hello and welcome to "Where Is Your Problem." It's a podcast about engineering disasters. The cable car, cable car was being operated by unqualified people. Right. Uh, the support cable and the carrier cable crossed owing to excessive speed. They were running the system fast because there were too many skiers, right? The cars stopped automatically because the manufacturer had put in a safety system. So if the cables crossed, cars would stop because excessive friction could cause problems, right? The operators overrode the safety shutoff then continue to run the cars at excessive speed. The friction caused the, the uh, carrier cable to snap the support cable. Oh, no, no, and, no, no. Yeah. And a cabin that's the thing fell. that I think is going to happen mm. to me yep. anytime yeah. I get on one of these full 200 feet to my death. Yes, the cabin fell 200 feet down a mountain, killed everyone except for one terrified 14-year-old girl. Jesus, uh, okay. Yes. Uh, oh, Christ. I think like 40-something people died in that accident. Uh, it was a pretty bad one. Yeah, um, no kidding. God, imagine is, being that girl. You just like, you know, sort of land on a, a carpet full of dead skiers, and you're like, that, <laughs> that's quite literally what happened. She yeah, was shielded yeah, by the yeah, other bodies yeah, around yeah. her. <laughs> um, and this thing, this is the direct result of like massive and continual disregard of basic safety. So, 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 what you're saying is, if you're in a cable car and shit goes wrong, get everyone to lie on the floor so you can get on top of them. Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah, yeah. News you can use. You know, useful safety tips for surviving your uh, your cable car crash. You got about three seconds. <laughs> Good luck to you. <laughs> get get like doing sort of MMA training, but not to beat a fight, but to knock everyone around me in like a small area to the floor in three seconds or faster. <laughs> So this this accident had a pretty obvious cause. It was the right, direct- I'm the least mangled of the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I assume she was fine. Uh, so not just alive, damage. but like, yeah, just walked out of it, probably, right? I'm not sure. Oh um, man, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't think fine. she. I don't think yeah, she had any swiftly. like super swiftly. serious injuries. But you know, this thing is sort of the direct result of massive, continual disregard of basic safety procedures and. Manufacturer's instructions. They wound up prosecuting four officials of the cable car company. Uh, they were all sent to prison, right? They fixed the thing. They put it back into service. It was fine. They didn't break any rules after that. <laughs> Hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. 
Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month, and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks. You get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. Well, see, the... the- this is this is the thing, right? This is like me and flying. Is every time some plane crash happens, I like I feel a bit better because I'm like, well, surely this can't happen again. Now that they've found the problem no, and fixed it, Canada it will, Alice. Even, every time Sorry. you say something like this, the, the the possibility of me being in person at a live show gets like one percent so lower. Be, you'll be fine, Alice. You're very <laughs> very pretty. <laughs> You're too pretty to get killed in a plane <laughs> crash. <laughs> It's like no, I'm hot. No, that, that 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 that's definitely a risk factor. If I've any movies I've seen, are, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, 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 are an indication. Don't be in a horror movie, Alice, because yeah. you're no, going I, first. I, I, I try not to be. Yeah, I, I, I know I don't have like final girl looks. So uh, they fixed the thing. They put it back in the service. Nothing bad's going to happen. Pretty girl first. Uh, well, did, uh, yeah, but that's what I mean. Is I don't look like the one who like survives all the way to the end. No, you're the you're the hot one who dies. Act yeah, one yeah, day. yeah. I, I, I will I will fully be like having sex, and then the movie will be like time to die now. <laughs> they kill the black guy first. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Do, do the God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so me and Chris is not looking good yeah, for yeah, us. I was about to say yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um. All right. So. The head one accident, it was really bad. It was, in fact, I believe the worst cable car accident in history. Um, but sort it's back up and running. Field. Yeah, it's back up and running. I, they're very safe systems. Um, so this is where we have to... Uh, I'm going to talk about sort of an abstract engineering concept here, right? Which is failure conditions, right? And this is mostly an aeronautical engineering term, but it can be sort of broadly applied hmm. elsewhere, right? Sure. Um, so most systems can have a wide variety of problems, right? Um, some of them are pretty minor problems. Like let's say in a cable car, maybe the power goes out in a cable car. What happens? The lights go out. You can't charge your phone, right? But the cable car still makes it to its destination. And if we look at this chart over here, in which the y-axis is probability of failure condition, and the x-axis is severity of failure condition effects. Um, that is something where it's pretty minor, right? This is a minor problem, and that means if it happens, it's okay. You don't, you don't have to engineer a super-duper robust system yeah. To prevent that from happening. It's, it, it's not safety critical that the lights yeah. be on all the time. But you don't right. you don't want you don't want it to happen still. I'm not saying you should you should let it happen, but like if it happens, it's not going to murder anyone. Mm. Right. So a, a more serious but less likely problem be like, okay, failure of the carrier wire, right? And that could do Ooh. anything from like strand the car in the middle of uh in between two towers, right? Uh, it could lead to the car sliding back into the lower station, so on and so forth, right? This is mitigated by multiple braking systems, redundant support wires, or if it's a single wire system, you make the one wire really big and strong, right? Um, so that that's sort of like, this is a major problem. Um, and you don't... you. You do not want that to happen. You you have to make that system very robust, right? Mm. You want to make sure. it really, really big and burly so it's obvious something is going to go wrong a long time before the problem actually occurs. Um, 
you know, and then you have additional systems, you know, you have rescue vehicles. This is in India. There was a stranded car. They couldn't get a wire out there. So they brought this. It's sort, of, sort of the cable car equivalent of a hand cart. Basically. Yeah. You know, and, Fuck and, that and rules. Had, shit. Jesus. Yeah. But imagine having to step onto this thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, um, down here, this is in Germany. I forget where you have guys zip lines down there. Um, and then, all right, get in a harness. We're bringing you back. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I have to. I have to get like strapped to a German firefighter for like yeah. forty-five minutes of whatever. Something, yeah, something like that. Yeah, great. You know, this is uh, well. Hope you're not afraid of heights, but it's irrelevant because <laughs> you know, you're coming down or you're not. You know, yeah, 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 yeah for sure. You want you want to stay up here? <laughs> one of those one of those conditions where where you're like uh yeah if you're thinking about having a panic attack uh don't don't yeah, the solution I, for that is you don't do that yeah you're gonna have to, gonna have to put that off for about 25 minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is entirely too long yeah you're gonna have to you're gonna have to hey, wait till you get on the ground to have the panic attack <laughs> <laughs> This, this is a whole rigmarole when you have a car stop, you can't get people off. So you try and avoid the situation. This is, again, recoverable, but you don't want to do this, right? But then there's, like, very rare situations where safety procedures cannot compensate for them. Yeah, you're, right? you're, you're catastrophic failure mode. You're completely catastrophic failure mode, but also you will see... You know, where, where you say this is acceptable is somewhere where it's an event which is extremely improbable, right? And that's where, don't yeah, worry it, about that. If that happens, it's because God hates you. It's a sort of like... <laughs> it's uh, not a mysterious act of God's love. It's a mysterious act of God's hate. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, so like in, in the sort of uh, plain typology, right? Uh, so uh, like a hazardous failure mode might be something like an, I don't know, like an uncontained engine failure. A catastrophic failure mode is like wing fall off. Yes. Uh, well, you would engineer so the wing doesn't fall off. Okay. Well, hit, 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 by, hit by meteor. Yeah, hit by meteor. That's, that's something you should not engineer for. Um, flew straight into a brick wall that appeared in front of the aircraft. <laughs> that's, you don't have to engineer for that. Um, Godzilla. Again, yeah. not yeah. something you engineer for. Um, so uh, a bunch of Libyan guys put a bomb in a suitcase in the cargo hold, that kind of thing. Yeah, you don't yeah. you don't engineer for that. That's 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 stupid to try and engineer for that. D don't do that. Um, th th then you're into sort of why don't you make the whole plane out of the black box kind of territory? It would be too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, the, the pithiest answer I ever heard to that was because highways aren't wide enough to drive planes down, which is what you would need to do. <laughs> so so these are things you cannot plan for and should not plan for, right? Safety is always a trade-off. All safety decisions are trade-offs and compromises. Um, yeah, sometimes you, know. you just get final destination and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, if you wanted to be perfectly safe, you could go live in a bunker for your entire life. I'm yeah. trying! I get to record a podcast in here now. Yeah, It's not that bad. And, and, well, nice. you, know, you know who went to go live in a bunker his entire life? Uh, Hitler, Hitler, eventually? And yeah. he died. Uh, so even that's not safe. Oh, he sure. might lose World War II. <laughs> yeah. Well, thankfully for us, Alice is not a Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in our case, um, in the first accident on this cable car system, they overrode safety systems to speed up the cable cars and then overrode oh, safety that. systems to start them back up. And, you know, uh, you can't reasonably engineer for people being that dumb with your system. You know, no, you, get what, you get what's coming to you, right? Um, and overall, cable cars are very safe systems if operated within their design envelope. Yeah, you shouldn't feel bad about, about taking one, it's going to be fine. Yeah. However, sometimes you encounter sort of force majeure, right? Like an outside yes. context problem. Yeah. And in, in, in the history of the world, one of the largest outside forces has been the United States Marine Corps. Hoorah! Not, not actually seen here because I wanted a picture that showed the the, the canopy. So I, I got a navy aircraft. Uh, <laughs> this this is a uh, an EA six B Prowler uh, product of Grumman. 
Um, One, two, three, four. United States Marine that's Corps. That's right. Murder eighteen people. <laughs> this this is this is a, a, an electronic warfare aircraft that was operated by the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Marines. Um, what what is what does it do? What is this thing? Um, but it it kind of does a bit of everything. Uh, it, it had a quite a lot, like a lot of niche specialist missions, but its bread and butter stuff is it jams targeting radars. Um, if you want to bomb, say, I don't know. Libya in the eighties, if you're Ronald Reagan, uh, you send a couple of these to like loiter off the coast, incapacitate the local air defense while the fighters get in, bomb the thing, get out again. Um, but it also like it can jam and intercept radio transmissions, so you can like collect signals intelligence from up there. Uh, it carries a couple of radar seeking missiles, so it can destroy air defense sites itself. Um, incidentally, a radar seeking missile is generally known by the much cooler name of an anti radiation missile. Um, nice. Also, you can see it has a gold cockpit um, that that yeah. is actual gold in the in the glass. Um, that that's supposed to minimize interference. I'm not sure if that actually works, but um, anyway, th that that's all like a lot of stuff that this 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 plane can do and is expected to do. And so, what you end up with is th this was originally a, a two seater plane. This one has been stretched. This is what makes it an A six B. Um, it's it's now a sort of like school bus with a pilot and a flight <laughs> officer up front. Uh, the flight officer navigates, uh, and then you have two sort of low level majors in the back uh, called electronic countermeasure officers (ECMOs), uh, and they do all of the stuff. Uh, they do all of the like radar jamming and so forth. You can also run it with just one pilot and three of those. Um, two it's things to note here. Oh, interesting sorry, go ahead. that they they you need all the spleen for. Four guys. I mean, I guess I get it, but you know, I, yeah. I feel oh, like yeah, for sure. ele electronic countermeasures. You know, wouldn't a Cessna do? I well, mean, here's, here's, <laughs> here's the thing: the, the, the replacement to this um, is sort of a, a variation of an FA-18. So hmm. you can kind of mount these to whatever you want, and this sort of gets into one of the things that I want to to observe about the Prowler is that, like. <laughs> Uh, it, it's it's basically a 1960s aircraft under there. This was um, uh, it was it was introduced um, in '71. Uh, the original project name was the Electric Intruder, which I find quite cool. That's um, a great name. <laughs> um, and and like it's basically it's it's too niche and too expensive to replace. You see this with a lot of sort of like uh, not directly combat aircraft um, for a like long time. Like the B fifty two. Yeah, like the B fifty two. Yeah, but it could just but it could just loiter forever. <laughs> B fifty twos, ASW aircraft, uh, carrier resupply aircraft. Uh, this thing is a carrier aircraft by design as well, um, and because it's so difficult to to create a new aircraft that is capable of taking off and landing on carriers, you like sticking with the stuff that you know works. What you do is you keep this. Like and every few years you go and you upgrade the magic electric computer stuff, and you call it good. Um, you, you install Windows two thousand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and like for, the other thing is, this is kind of a boring job. Like for a long time, these have been in search of something to do because you only really want to use one of these in a kind of war where you have surface to air missiles shooting at aircraft, and you want to stop that from happening. So these things, they are some use in the Gulf War. Uh, they've got some use in like isolated airstrikes here and there, but really these were sort of waiting for a Cold War to go hot that never did. Um, I was itching to donate them to Ukraine right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, mm -hmm. I mean, they're out of service, so maybe. Um, I, it's it, like as far as I know, none of these was ever lost in combat. Uh, they 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 fired oh, missiles we can change stuff, that. but <laughs> in Ukraine. <laughs> um, but the, like the perverse thing is, for something that involves a lot of carrier takeoffs and landings, this is weirdly a boring job. It's not that prestigious. Uh, it's not very dangerous. Most of what you're doing as a pilot is you drive to the location and three other guys go on the computer. Right. Um, it's a land party. Yeah, 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 and they really, they really stretched what they expected these things to do. Like in in the war on terror, they were flying these things over Afghanistan, trying to like jam cell phones so you couldn't set off IEDs and stuff. And it's like, yeah, I guess, but it's I don't know. It, it feels like a bit of a a waste, really. Um, next slide, please. So we have a bunch of these just just sitting around. Uh, they're normally attached to a carrier group, but in this case, um, we were in the midst of. 
the Balkan Wars in the 90s. Um, and as a result of the Balkan Wars, uh, VMAC 2, with the Are We the Bad Guys emblem, uh, a marine <laughs> electronic warfare squadron, uh, are based out of Aviano Air Base in northern Italy. Um, and what they're supposed to be doing is, is to do uh, like suppression of enemy air defences over the former Yugoslavia, try and stop British Harriers from getting shot down during reconnaissance flights. Um, Incidentally, uh, th this squadron used to be called the Playboys, complete with the like bunny logo. But Jesus in, Christ! In, in 1992, the woke leftist Marine Corps made them stop doing that, uh, and they they had to change it. Uh, Incredible! I, I, they 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 stopped them from being horny, and they had to be <laughs> fascist instead. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, th I think in this phase they were called something like the Death Jokers. Um, the that's Death a stupid Joker. Name. <laughs> Stupid name. If you're, so, if you're so, listening to this on just audio, we're looking at a badge here that has a skull in a Joker hat. And the skull is smiling. Jesters. Yeah, yeah, it's more of a jester hat. Yeah, actually. Yeah, uh, and yeah. The, the the squadron motto there can do easy. Um, yes. So, but you have to keep up with your training, even when you're like deployed, uh, and that means you have to do the low altitude training, which. You do need for oh a bunch of boy. reasons. You're probably not gonna like use it, but just in case, just in case you need to be like ducking away from MIGs coming through the folder gap or whatever, you need to be able to like train guys to to fly and navigate in valleys and stuff. Uh, I I have some cockpit. This is from cockpit footage of them doing that in Washington uh, about the same time. Um, they, they still do crap like this. I mean, I was in uh, I mentioned I was in Switzerland a long time ago. I there was a nice hotel there with a nice restaurant we went to a couple of times you could sit out on the back porch this is way up the mountain you could watch the uh swiss air force doing maneuvers below you and oh, it yeah. was you know it's kind there's, of like, there's, yeah. there's, there's, there, damn there look at those be... jets down there <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a place called the mac loop in, in wales where you could do that but they've they've since stopped doing it there um but so on february 3rd 1998 uh, I, I finally got to do a date. Uh, uh, Captain Richard Ashby's plane, his his EA six B, uh, call sign EZ zero one, is instead of bombing, yeah, instead of instead of doing like seed over Yugoslavia, it is doing some low altitude training. Um, this is Ashby's last flight before he gets promoted to fly fighters, uh, which is obviously much cooler. Uh, and prior to this, he's received a bunch of warnings for shit like flying too low, flying under cables, d doing barrel rolls. <laughs> um, I, I believe the US military report <laughs> into this refers to them with the phrase Top Gun antics, which is very funny. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, in, he's, he's, he's up front, sitting next to him is Captain Joseph Schweitzer, he's his navigator. It's his last flight before leaving the Marine Corps. There's only he's getting one out. flight from retirement. Genuinely, <laughs> yes. Yes. Jesus. Uh, next slide, please. So, here we have the map that they had in front of them for planning this. Um, and if you look, uh, just sort of in the center, go, go from the center slightly down, just above Predazzo, uh, you, you see a mark for Aerial Cableway. That is the only marking uh, on there. It doesn't show you where it goes. Oh, boy. Um, Wait, where? Uh, okay, so... Uh, Trento's over squares. here. I'm at Trento. And okay. Okay. So, this. so if you if you look if you follow the arrow all the way up, uh, right. it's like the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth uh, crosshatch marking up that arrow, uh, right above Predazzo. Oh, okay. I see it. Yeah. Um, you, aerial cableway. Yep. Aerial cableway. Uh, there aerial it is. Cableway. Right. Okay. Uh, That's not very well marked. <laughs> no, it really isn't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, and you see, this also has like various like high points that might be sort of threats to aircraft here, like church steeples and power plants and aerial cables marked on it. Mountains. Um, <laughs> it also, also <laughs> those. Um, oh, so you got topographic marks for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the Italian government has put out this order that bans flight under two thousand feet under any circumstances. Smart. Th these oh, a good idea. Yeah, frankly. These guys don't know about it. Because their squadron commander never tells them. Um, 
He never tells them because the minimum altitude they're supposed to do on this is a thousand feet. Um, and their the, the squadron commander, Lieutenant Colonel Muga, he's like, ah, it's probably safe, fuck the Italians. Um, like, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's above anything that could really be dangerous. Um, it's fine. Um, so you're supposed to fly above a thousand feet, or two thousand feet if you're listening to the Italians. Um, you're also never supposed to fly under cables of any kind. And there's a speed limit, um, so you do all of that. You, 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 you genuinely, uh, you, you do all of this. You fly through the thing, get, uh, get it, get it clocked by one of those New York City speed cameras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they send out the the, the NYPD EA six B to pull just, you over. I just want to point out, this is not a lightly populated area. No, <laughs> no, you people are just you know coming out here, flying in their jets at like five hundred miles an hour, right above people's houses. <laughs> well, this is th- thus why the the speed limit is is like I think it's like five hundred and seventeen miles an hour is to stop you from like breaking everyone's windows. Yeah. Um. So so they do the they do the morning maintenance. Uh. The 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 crew the flight crew goes over the whole aircraft. The mechanics go over the whole aircraft. The G meter is broken. Um. That's the meter that tells you how many G there is. Um. That's that that's busted. So they replace that. Everything else is fine. Um, and the navigator goes to the pilot and says, "Hey, since it's my last flight, can I borrow your camcorder to like film us oh, doing this?" Dear. Uh, I, Next, I was <laughs> probably like maybe fourteen, fifteen. I was at my grandparents' house in Lexington, Virginia, and every once in a while, a Vimy uh, graduate decides to buzz the academy. Oh yeah, classic. And this one did it particularly low. One of the loudest sounds I heard in my life. <laughs> I, uh, uh, C- Central Glasgow at one point was immediately under um, a-, a typhoon, a Eurofighter that got um, that was intercepting a, like a passenger plane that wasn't responding or something, and it didn't actually break my window, but I had a big like picture window in my flat, and it rattled the absolute fuck out of that. No, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, terrifying. <laughs> Um, but so that that's what they're gonna do is they're gonna scare some Italians, but it's gonna it's be a fine. Bunch of old Italian ladies yelling at this guy the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. So 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 they set off. Um, Ashby is apparently doing some more Top Gun shit. Like at one point, he literally does a barrel roll. Um, Schweitzer, the navigator, he is filming. He's mostly filming himself. Apparently, a lot of the footage. Uh, is is like his own face smiling. So like he's, he's doing a doing a selfie run, doing a TikTok. Yeah, g- genuinely, yes. Like before the existence of or the popularization of the the cell phone camera, he's he's doing selfies. Uh, the military will never change. It's it's just like this. Um, and then they hit the uh, aerial cableway marking. Yes, and get they get a bunch of pasta sauce gets all over the ground. Yes. Oh. Well, this is Italy, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they, they they hit the cable and well, it's, it, it's Italy month. Eric, well, there's your problem, <laughs> podcast. <laughs> that's that's right. And the the failure mode that I'm always terrified of happens. They they go through the cable. They hit the cable at like 540 miles an hour. It is one of those catastrophic failure modes. Like that, you can't that you can't build a cable. You you, you can't build a cable. That resists the that cable is aircraft being, proof. Yeah, yeah you, yes. can't, you can't make it aircraft proof. No, um, and it it just snaps through it, and the the, the cable car drops two hundred and sixty feet to the ground. Yes, kills twenty people. Uh, one thing I noticed about this disaster, which I think is different from a lot of disasters we covered, is uh, there's a lot more blood in this one. Oh yeah, um, you know, I I think maybe because it fell on the snow. You know, you I think so. You mm-hmm. couldn't like uh, wash that off for the press photos, but uh, yeah, this 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 one was, you know, it's pretty gruesome. I mean, I think everyone died instantly. You know, yeah, you uh, just kind of like explode at that point. Yeah, yeah but, you like, turn into you turn into a sort of um, a smash burger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's partly a function of the snow and partly a function of like the Italian press, like just being able to get up there and like take photos right mm-hmm. on top of it. But you'd want to push people back further than this, so they couldn't take this photo. Um, this is an example of a uh, a failure condition that you cannot engineer for. A yes, plane 
flies into the cable. That's so wildly out of the pale of possibility. Right, no one's planning for that yeah. shit. Yes. You can't plan for it, and you shouldn't plan for it. And, uh, and, and, <laughs> and often, uh, when it's not like a, a, a natural phenomenon or something, uh, I find that these sort of like catastrophic failing modes generally come from a sort of uh, another organization or another system that isn't doing its own safety. Like this is this is sort of a catastrophic, unforeseeable event to a cable car. This is not a catastrophic, unforeseeable event to a marine squadron. Um, Th this is something that, like, the safety of this belonged to another organization that did not do it. Yes. Right. Uh, next slide, please. So, you'll be pleased to know that the plane is fine. Awesome. Um, this, is, this is the vertical stabilizer. You can tell it just sheared right the fuck through there before it snapped away. Uh, which is sort of a testament to how strong that cable was, incidentally. Um, but so, uh, this plane, EZ-01, gets this hugely dramatic looking tail damage and some, some wing damage as well, but uh, combat, combat planes are very strong, uh, it's, it's fine, like it, it comes back to, to Aviano uh, and, and lands safely. Um, I think it would have been funnier if they just slammed right into the cable car itself. <laughs> just um, perfectly 9 11 it, yeah. Yeah, 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 you know. Well, um, everyone was going to die anyway, at least then the perpetrators would as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so these four guys, this flight crew, they land back at Aviano and they know they're fucked, right? Because they've seen mm -hmm. it happen. Uh, they're, they're not unaware of what's happened, like they've been filming it also. Um, they know that the minimum uh, altitude they should have been at is like 2,000 feet per the Italians, 1,000 feet per the Marines, and they were at like 260, maybe up to like 330. Um, yeah, this, this cable car is not especially high off the ground. No, um, it, it, it is purely something that you would do if you were trying to show off. Right. Um, uh, they're also they're also over the speed limit. You know, the, the big sort of like speed camera catches them. Um, it, it's like five seventeen miles an hour, and they hit it at like five hundred and forty. Um, All right, but okay, that's. Yeah, because if they hit it at five seventeen, it would have been fine. It would have bounced within off. The limit. That's, it's within <laughs> the limit of like what you can reasonably speed, right? It's like okay, <laughs> it's like know, the, the, like plus or minus five percent kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, five percent on this thing's like fifty miles an hour or something. No, five percent of five hundred is twenty-five miles an hour. Twenty-five miles an hour. Oh, yeah, a little yeah. bit over. Okay, <laughs> but like, just a bit, just a bit. Yeah, it's like a couple of points on your license kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, investigators will later find both a copy of the Italian minimum altitude restriction and a map that showed the cable car more clearly in the cockpit, in envelopes, unopened. Oh, hey. outstanding. Uh, the, the the crew members, by the way, to this day insist that the Italians are lying about that, um, and that, they're not. You know, yeah, uh, I'm just, I'm just like. Back then, you had to have a paper map, and there's this guy with a camcorder, but he also has like the the Rand McNally Atlas open. He's trying <laughs> yeah, to navigate, he's the the navigator plane. too. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> uh, hey the guys, next I'm here in the plane. I got my <laughs> Rand McNally Atlas. Uh, we're gonna try and get to uh, to Reno today. Uh, <laughs> 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 if we go to the next slide, we can see some of the wing damage, which is even less. Like that's that's nothing. Uh, it, it it just knocked the thing open, but it's it's fine. Uh, so it, you know what, what do you what do you do about this if you're this flight crew? Well, and cover it up. Yeah, next cover slide. Up. In, in, in the up. finest of U.S. military traditions, you cover it up. Uh, the the navigator he takes the tape out of the camcorder and literally burns it behind a bar and replaces oh. it with a blank one. Terrific. Just um, terrific work. So, oh, so, so, so obviously you're getting court-martialed, right? You're getting court-martialed. In this case, you're getting court-martialed for uh, 20 counts of manslaughter, which is not a small thing. Um, well, the Italians but, tried to try him in It doesn't work. Italy. It doesn't work. It didn't work. Exactly. forces agreement and shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, you, because you can't do it. You know, once, it no. once again, NATO, great. Yes. A great idea. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm fully. glad we have it. <laughs> yeah, you, you you have to like uh, have U.S. personnel be subject to U.S. military courts. Uh, mm. U.S. military courts are, are very very serious, and that's why the pilot, Captain Ashby, he claims 
my altimeter, the one that they, they checked right before they left that morning, that was broken. Um, oh. Interesting and, how that works. And it didn't it didn't make any like low altitude warning mm -hmm. noises. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I didn't know that I was too uh -huh. low, yes. despite the fact that I was flying mm -hmm. through a valley. Um, you can see it. You can see that you're flying yeah, you low, can, motherfucker. You can see. Yeah, you, <laughs> you can look you, out you the window. But you know, as 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 a marine officer, he's entitled to be tried by a jury of his his brother officers, and uh, you know, it's it's all very fair, and they acquit both of them. <laughs> ah. <laughs> this this defense of I am too stupid to look where mm -hmm. I am flying that works. Um, I don't know, guys. I'm pretty dumb. All the Marines <laughs> were like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty dumb as well." <laughs> yeah, I don't know, yeah. Uh, uh, get, get, uh, get, get, peers, yeah. Fe yeah. Feeling like jury deliberations are like kind of going to the wire because they're onto like their third box of crayons in the jury room. <laughs> they're all very, very, very invested in punitive systems, but they inadvertently do jury nullification every si every time because they're like yeah i probably would have done that too uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the um uh, uh my my favorite crowd callback in in rocky horror picture show is uh where rocky is like he's like cramming food into his mouth with uh, uh like with his hands and someone and he yelled before that rocky like a marine uh, and then when he gets yelled at and he starts doing the exact same thing, just cramming like hunks I'll of food right into back. his mouth. My food is here for later. No worries. Uh, yeah, so when he like gets yelled at and he starts doing the same thing and cramming hunks of hunks of food into his mouth with a fork, uh, you just go like, hey Rocky, eat like a marine officer. <laughs> but yeah, so the, 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 he, he, the pilot's acquitted, the prosecution against the navigator collapses after that. Um, and and what happens after that is that the two crew members in the back, the two sort of like low level electronic warfare majors, um, I, I say low level, they're all like they're all captains. I think this is like all junior officers uh, in here. Right. But but both of those guys, they have like maybe an attack of conscience or something, um, and they get immunity in exchange for telling NCIS, like in the right. show, the the Navy cops. The, the, um, the, they told the goth chick from NCIS. Yes, yeah, they told yes. the goth chick from NCIS the truth about this tape, uh, and we get a second court martial of the pilot and the navigator uh, for uh, down from twenty counts of manslaughter to you destroyed a videotape, um, mm -hmm. and, and this amounted to obstruction of justice and conduct unbecoming. Conduct unbecoming is kind of a bullshit charge. C conduct like, unbecoming of an officer and a gentleman. Yes, yeah, it, 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 it's literally just like, you have embarrassed the institution. Um, you have embarrassed the Marines, which yes, has such we a great reputation globally. We didn't think it was possible, but you found a way. Um, uh, but, but they do get them on the second, on the second try, they, uh, they convict both of them. Uh, both of them get kicked out of the Marines, one of them was literally leaving after this anyway. Um, uh, the pilot gets four and a half months in jail, uh, sentenced to six, which is not a lot. Like, that's, you, that, that, you, it's not a lot for uh, killing twenty people through negligence. No, I mean, like, if you, if you, I don't know, if you were driving and you, like, even if you weren't drunk or whatever, you just plowed into a crowd and killed twenty people somehow. I, I feel like you would get more than six months in prison. I disagree. Well, yeah, if I you, mean, if maybe. you stay by the accident. You will get nothing. <laughs> if, well, as long as you don't hit and run, we've kind uh, of like the U.S. court system will give you nothing for that. <laughs> you, you, you know those posts that's like murder is functionally legal if you do it in a car. Apparently, also true of well, I guess why shouldn't it be of, you know, of you a know, combat you know, aircraft? Yeah, you know, combat aircraft. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, it is it is designed to kill people, Alice. Yeah, that's yeah. its job. Um, not 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 this usually is, this like is this, doing your but... job. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so uh, NATO compensates the families with about like a million dollars each uh, of NATO funds, like 75% of that comes from the US, but in the end Italy ends up paying more than the US does in compensation. Um, it, like, it, it's out like $23 million, I think. Um, th this, of course, singularly fails to prevent a wave of anti-Americanism in Italy. Um, which we can add to the sort of great big list of you know fantastic moments in international military cooperation, like the time uh, a, a guy crushed a bunch of South Korean school children with an Abrams tank and all the rest of it. Abrams um, is basically a car. 
Well, that's legal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's functionally a car. Uh, I, have, and the, I have a question, actually. Yeah, yeah. So they were acquitted, and then the two other guys came through and provided evidence yeah, they, they burned the tape. So yes. It, but that's a different charge, so it's not double jeopardy. Okay. I, yes. I was, yeah. I was a little bit confused there. Yeah. No, I had to try him for the lesser crime. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, we, 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 t- technically, what we did was uh, convict them on a charge of like obstructing an investigation which found that they committed no crime. Um, right. So it's sort of procedural in that way. Um, yes, and- the system's great. <laughs> yeah. So 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 obviously this like the navigator's career was already over. It ends the pilot's career. Uh it, it also ends the career of the, the squadron commander, which yeah, good. Um of the two the two guys in the backseat, one of them, uh Seagraves, the guy who like I believe uh I, I don't want to say ratted on, but the one who got immunity first, um he he's fine. Like he he got out in like 2017 as a uh like a, a full colonel long list of pretty cool assignments. He was like events coordinator for the Blue Angels at one point. Um, like a bunch of cool jobs, and he got all of those despite the fact that um, I, this is the fun thing about immunity. After the thing, when uh, they were in the, the, the officer's mess afterwards, he asked them about the tape and allegedly instructed them to destroy it. So, a valuable <laughs> lesson about the sort of Internal politics of how to conduct yourself amidst a, a, a sort of a naval criminal investigative service investigation. Oh. Rats early, rat often. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you're in line to to rat, stay in <laughs> yeah, line. Yeah, exactly. It's like the opposite of all of those lawyer TikToks. No, if investigators come to you, tell them everything. Give them everyone. <laughs> And I mean, that actually might be you good advice in the military justice talk, system. Because you need to talk to the goth chick first. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like in, 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 the, in, the US, in the military justice system, you have no rights functionally. You can't just sit there and be like, uh, I don't know anything. You, you genuinely should, yeah. T- t- tell them everything. Rass on your friends. Do it. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's the lesson, I guess. Excellent. Yeah. Um, the, the the sort of like civil litigation is long and largely in inconclusive, right? Um, the U.S. Congress rejected a compensation package in like 1989. The Italian Parliament eventually approved compensation for the families. The tune about 1.9 million dollars per victim. It's a lot of Xbox. Yes, that's uh, what's what's Xbox and but in Italian, uh, Xboxy, Xboxy. Xbox. Xbox 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 Xboxucci. So, um, I believe the United States, through a NATO treaty, paid about 75% of that. Yeah. Um, And the Sarmese cable car was replaced with something with more but smaller cabins. Yeah, to make them a smaller talk. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I, I I don't know if there's any, like as we've said, there's nothing the cable car could have done to avoid this. I don't know if there's anything they could do to like prevent it after the fact. Uh, this I, is entirely the fault of the United States Marine Corps. Uh, Just put uh, it on the pile with all of the other stuff. Yes, I, uh, many, many many issues. They have. Why why are they a separate <laughs> branch? Why do we need a separate branch for <laughs> wet soldiers? I thought they weren't a separate branch. I thought they were in the Department of the Navy. There, there are, there, but it's it's weird, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. It's, it's a separate branch, same department kind of thing. Um, okay. so, so I guess same thing now as the Space Force is still Department of the Air Force. Space Force yeah, has Has anyone been to space in the Space Force? I don't uh, think that's, so. That, <laughs> that's classified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've we've been saying the X-37B is unmanned for years, but actually there's like six dudes in there. <laughs> yeah, like, there's like six dudes and they crashed right into a mountain at hypersonic <laughs> speeds. We do this each week. <laughs> I eventually we're gonna find a guy who survives and we're gonna use him to breed our yeah. space marine program. <laughs> Perversely, I, I do agree that the Space Force probably should be a separate branch, but I don't think the Marine should be. I, I yeah. I'll, I'll buy that. Why not? Yeah, I think the Space Force should be under the Department of the Navy. 
uh, replacing the Marines. <laughs> this, this, this is a sort of Halo timeline, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> so they, This is how you can have a Master Chief in space, you know, unless he's like a corpsman or something. So I don't know enough if having more smaller cars is better than less bigger cars. So if you are a CC head, yeah. if, you, if you are a cable carer, if you are an aerial gram fan fan <laughs> yes yeah let us know in the comments because i don't know but this is what the modern system looks like well we call you a trover but that's okay a, <laughs> a roper oh i don't like, like that the, the, yeah. i think it's probably one of those situations where they're like oh only we can use that word you know <laughs> it's, a, it's like reclaiming go home farmers we're the <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna do like huge on like cable car guy TikTok, I think. Is there there's there, there's gotta be there's gotta be there's, there's TikTok for everything, Rose. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. I was surprised because I was like, there's gotta be a cable car enthusiast like forum or something I could look up for this. And there doesn't seem to be like yeah, even, it's all on the even, dark like, web. Even like Wikipedia is like surprisingly underdeveloped for like no, it's, it, 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 it's I, like I was, an onion link, you know. You yeah. gotta, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, if you're if you're a Ariel Graham Omer, if you're, a, if, you're if you're a only trams, yes, yes. Uh, if you're in, if if, let, if you're in like. If you're in like DSA Northern Italy branch transit riders caucus or whatever, yes, yeah, get at us. If you're in DSA Switzerland, uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, the the logo is like a couple of hands shaking over a, like a tramway. If you if you have debates over how many carrier and support wires there really should be, um. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm sure a bunch of military people are going to get mad at me for fucking up shit about both the Marines and planes, but I don't That's know funny. anything about either. Um. All right. I you know I have known several Marines in my lifetime, and they are fifty fifty the nicest people I've ever met and complete psychos. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I feel like the marine niceness gradient sort of like is directly correlated or inversely correlated to number of like marine stickers that you have on your truck kind of this thing. This is true. Yes. All right. Well, let's wrap this bitch up. Let's do it. We have a section on this podcast called Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Hello, Raz. <laughs> Yeah, Raz. Yeah, Raz. from Psychonauts. <laughs> Alice, Liam, and hello, eventual guest. Shut mm, the fuck up. No, it's been a minute. Yeah, we haven't had a guest. Now, but, um, I hope this is the right place to share this, because at the moment, I'm out of a job, mainly because of the story of the pub I am about to share with you, and I can't afford a subscription. Send you a subscription. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I invite you to guess while you're reading this, the country which I live in. Southern Switzerland or Northern Italy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the pub in question, which we'll call PH, was really popular some 10 to 15 years ago because it was the only pub in its area. But as time progressed, it got less business. And they started cutting some corners. Quite a lot of corners, in fact. And they started getting creative on how to earn more money and spend less money. And it's efficiency. Quite a lot creative, in fact. Oh. When I started working there as a dishwasher, I was kind of amazed that the kitchen would work as well as it did. Mainly because the stove, four burner, and gas grill block had bent in rusty metal legs and was sitting on big, empty, rusted cans of tomato sauce. The fridge, <laughs> the fridge would randomly stop working a couple times a month, with no food at all being thrown out, not even the brine shimp shrimps. Well, that, that's why they're being. That's why they're brined, right? Is it's fine. I think I lived in this kitchen in 
Alex. Um, <laughs> I, lo I, lo I love being like, yeah, it's a, it's a load bearing empty can of tomato sauce. Don't worry about that. Also, Brian Shimps. Brian Shimps. Yes. <laughs> Um, exactly one meter behind the sink, sitting next to the table on which we put clean dishes and glasses to be put away, there was the gas pasta boiling machine. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus. That rules. <laughs> How do I get one of those? Yeah. Um, <laughs> separated from the stove by a small gap of around 40 centimeters in which we had to squeeze through to get to the fridge if the barman needed fruits and such for the bar. The slicer on which we cut all the prosciutto, speck, salami, and so on had no clamp. So we had to hold what we were cutting by hand, and that's where I lost the tip of my thumb. Oh. I'm really always whenever we get a restaurant safety third, like I I if it's every, gonna go poorly. The most yeah, dangerous I'm always like, job. I, I'm always like, yeah, this is I'm so <laughs> glad I've never had to do restaurant work. <laughs> Anything else? We've had oil shit, and I've been like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But like restaurant stuff, I'm like, oh, thank God, I've never had to do that. <laughs> well, this story is not about my fingers, nor the time in which I had to climb an eight meter tall ladder prop, uh, propped up against said tomato cans to go try and open the AC tube that was taped closed with cardboard. This <laughs> story is about how and why the pub was finally closed. The PH was a three-story building. Oh, is it PH down? because of Olive Garden being OG and they've just like shifted a lesser? Uh, okay. Uh, I I just put I I they didn't send a picture, so I put Olive Garden. Oh, um, well, if <laughs> if you accidentally decoded this, that'd be so funny. The uh, PH was in a three-story building with a downstairs, a main floor, and an elevated floor. Again, um, Olive Garden's only in America where we haven't invented the second floor yet. Yeah, um, yeah, lost technology. Yeah, lost technology. Um, so it has to be somewhere else. Um, the downstairs area was connected by a narrow staircase, only wide enough for two people if they would squeeze a bit. This downstairs area was only open on the weekends, and the owners decided to use this area to host what we call disco events. Sorry, were you the cook at the mm -hmm. fucking whirling in rags? <laughs> the DJ would sit up on a console. Two of the organizers would place a table and some chairs to restrict the access below the only staircase to take their money, stamp the people who got in, and give them their tickets for two free drinks. Meanwhile, two barmen, who were often me and a colleague, would mix drinks nonstop for the 300 plus people participating, and everybody except us would have a great time. <laughs> There's no way they were tipping. No. No. <laughs> Tip for your free drinks, folks. Give <laughs> give the bartender a dollar. Just, yes. If you if you only come away from this podcast with one thing, you have to tip even for free drinks. Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> so what was not particularly good is that this room had tables and chairs for circa a hundred people on normal days and these would need to be moved to create a dance floor. Where did we move them? But of course, in front of the fire exit. <laughs> yes! <laughs> How to create, like, a basement full of charred corpses <laughs> in this one easy step. In addition, the ventilation was older than the pub Station itself. Station nightclub was supposed to be a cautionary wait, tale, wait, not wait, an wait, instruction manual. Hold, hold, hold on, this is, a, this is a fascinating sentence here. The ventilation was older than the pub itself. It is, was it like naturally occurring? Did someone like build an HVAC system and then like someone built a pub around it later? Yeah, it was one of those like old Iranian like <laughs> yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> ventilation was older than the pub itself, so every surface would get soon very moist with the breath oh. and perspiration of three hundred plus people. Sometimes Ugh. you could feel the air sparkling on your tongue for how much carbon uh, dioxide there was. Oh, like that. This is this is the basement where you go to get COVID. Yeah. The organizers, of course, thought that what the party really needed was a smoke machine, which they used very liberally. <laughs> great, great. Now, this could be a great time to also point out that the attendees would be rarely older than 16, except for some local hooligans that would come for the cheap alcohol 
and then stay for the fights that would inevitably break out between them and yes. usually end up in someone getting stabbed after they get thrown out by the bouncer. Note that bouncer is singular. <laughs> Great. Finally, on their 20th year of operations, the ASL, the Hacienda Sanitaria Locale, uh, checked hey, in Hey, we on finally us. placed it in Italy. Yeah, it's in yeah. Italy, yeah. <laughs> checked in on us and closed <laughs> down the pub as they did some major renovations, which included cleaning the kitchen, painting all the walls, which didn't last long since the walls were coated by a thick, yellowed layer of grease and the paint peeled right off. Oh, God. Getting oh, rid of the paint, like the walls <laughs> repel paint now. <laughs> <laughs> We've accidentally <laughs> made hydrophobic walls. <laughs> Getting rid of the Indiana Jones volcano ride passage between the stoves. Got rid of the pasta machine. Hey, I would like a pasta machine. Um, Going begging, you yeah. know. Got a new slicer, fixed the fridge, do a deep clean between the bar counters and the wooden, slightly elevated floor behind them that contained 20 years of dust, fallen fruits resembling what you could find in a pyramid and a couple of dead rodents. And this, mm -hmm. of course, put some additional financial strain on some of the already struggling PH's owners, which decided to double down on the disco events. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, more disco! <laughs> which in turn garnered the attention of the uh, Carabinieri. <laughs> yeah, the Carabinieri. Yeah, but I don't know why. I, I've only no, I'm seen gonna, it I'm written gonna, No, you, you won this one. I'm going to start five. calling them that now. I, I've, I've, never, I've, 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 I've never had to pronounce the word. I've only had to yeah, talk no, to them. Yeah, no, it's Joe Kasabian syndrome. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Any, 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 all right. After a couple of parents denounced it both to them and the press, so they could no longer ignore the situation like they did for years in exchange for some of alleged bribery. Finally, are you, are you accusing Caravinieri and like a small <laughs> town of being corrupt? <laughs> but the cars are so cool. Yeah, <laughs> they're the cool stripes, like alphas. Uh, yeah, no. yeah, they're like all black with the red stripes. Oh my god. Or like white leather, no, one of the most aesthetic law enforcement agencies, I would say. Again, I've never had to pronounce the name. I've only had to talk to them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, in what context? Uh, this is when my dad was trying to uh, report a, uh, oh, yeah, his of course, wallet of course. being stolen, <laughs> and the lady yelled at him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Finally, find the owners for 10,000 euro and shut the pub down definitively. Uh, I mean, it's a victory for regulation, right? Yes. They, but they closed down the only Olive Garden in Italy. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Oh, no. Actually, did, did you see that uh, uh, Domino's is leaving Italy because Italians don't want to eat terrible American pizza? Italians yes, are so great. Like, they hate every American chain that shows up there. <laughs> Starbucks, left. <laughs> Domino's left. Uh, Olive Garden, as far as I know, never even tried. Uh, I could have moved to Italy. They <laughs> exported Italy, which is a bizarre, a bizarre place. Because um, there's a restaurant here and it's a grocery store there. <laughs> 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 um, I, don't, I, I, I admire the Italian commitment to small business. Even if small business owners are also reactionary, they're reactionary in a more interesting way. That's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> um, I hope this story wasn't longer than the limits because I've written it in the Twitter messages before hearing you say to send an email, and I actually have no idea how long it is. Bye, guys, gal, and maybe guests. Love the podcast. Thank you. Uh, P.S. Let me know if you want to know the time I work for a P.I. installing secret cameras in clothing stores inside of smoke detectors, uh, disabling them in the process, and stopping the beeping chime in the security panel as a solution. Might have to. This is this that. is that's the, that's that's the most <laughs> European job I've ever heard. Yes. Is yeah, I install the secret surveillance cameras that break the fire alarm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I'm I'm a, I'm secret police. Um. <laughs> 
I am secretly unmarked police car. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're 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 on the NATO side, but we're secret police. <laughs> Yeah, I can only be tried in an American military court for my we smoke will, alarm disabled. We will the hang if we have to. <laughs> Italy rules. I gotta move to Italy. Yeah. That's that's a good idea. You know, you could we could, we could buy a castle for a dollar. God, yeah, like yeah. Steve Bannon did, except you know, not well, fascistly. Corrupt, yeah, yeah, we could go. We could all go live in the in the podcasting castle together. That'd be fun. Yeah, be Castel fun. Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Alright, hurry this up so I can finish eating. Okay. Our next episode is on the Boston Molasses Disaster. Uh, so anyone have any commercials before we go? Oh, the usual shit. Yeah, you already know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> bye. <laughs> that was rather anticlimactic, I think. <laughs> okay, well, sorry. bye. Yeah. Bye. Well, Abolish yeah. the Marine Corps. Yeah, uh, honestly. That's a good idea. Replace him with the Space Corps. Yeah. <laughs>